Jacques, just to start off, I mean, pretty back and forth game the first half, and then you guys have that offensive explosion in the third quarter. What kind of change for you guys there? Well, I thought we were pretty lucky actually to, you know, even be winning at halftime. Just uh, the amount of shots that they had uh, from rebounding. Uh, I thought they got some good looks. Uh, they shot more threes than they usually take. Uh, but I think overall, we really made an adjustment of not giving up offensive rebounds. So that was a big key. Uh, I think we had 12 that we gave up in the first half. So that was huge. Then we took care of the basketball. So I think four turnovers in the second half allowed us to, to really get downhill, make threes, and uh, rim look pretty pretty big tonight. I was going to say, first half offensive rebound, and it seemed like, you know, in transition also they were hurting you guys, but you talked about them playing faster under Quinn, so it seems like that was, I mean, how much of that was preventable versus just kind of them them doing what they do essentially? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. They were trying to play fast, but uh, when we, you know, kept them to one shot, that allows us to, you know, go right back at them, and that's one of our strengths is to be able to play fast as well. We went small, which I think uh, really changed the game a little bit, uh, created some space for us. You saw there was multiple times where we were able to get downhill uh, and get into the paint because we were small. What you did in the third, I mean, did you kind of find a little bit of that formula in the second quarter? I mean, you're down eight. I think you go on like a 14-4 to four yeah. run or some such like that. For sure. Yeah, Dayron played his uh, first stint, and then we put Doe in at uh, the second stint that was going to be Dayron's. That really opened the, the court up for us, uh, allowed Mikhail, Spence, CJ really to turn the corner, you know, get on top of the rim. So uh, huge for our guys to be able to play, like we talked about, to be able to be versatile, play big, play small. Uh, and then, you know, got a guy, like, a guy like Royce who can handle, played when we were small, played when we were big. So a uh, perfect fit tonight. Coach, when you look at Mikel Bridges and just the 42 points, at this point, do you get to a point where you're shocked or just talk about like just the how impressive he gets game by game and what stands out just to you? Uh, you know, I see him, you know, at shoot around. I see him on days off. I see how he takes care of his body. I see him do film work. Um, so you expect it in the sense uh, he's done the work, and so you can live with the results. And I think he's just gaining more confidence with our group. I think our group is starting to understand uh, when he's going to look for a shot, where those shots are coming from. We put in some se sets to kind of help that a little bit. Our spacing has been good, uh, and, and but you give a credit to the, to the athlete. He's delivering. For you guys to hold Trey to 3 of 12 shooting on the night. Just what was the game plan going in? I know you wanted to take free throws away, but 3 of 12, I mean, that's that's a pretty good job on him. What was the game plan going in? Yeah, I think overall you saw we had different bodies on him. Spencer started on him, which was different from the last time. Uh, I thought our coverage was pretty solid. They're really good at getting in and out of screens, sometimes not setting those screens. Uh, I thought our communication on the defensive end was pretty good and then we didn't foul him as much you know uh, uh, to get him going sometimes you know you, you get a player like that he makes free throws and then the next you know he feel good about himself uh, I thought all of his shots were contested tonight uh, with the hand with the heavy hand in front of him and then just the rebound margin 46 them and 41 for you which is pretty close given what you were saying uh, pregame just what did you think about the job about keeping Capella off the boards and then how Nick played in terms of just crashing the glass yeah we weren't pleased at halftime uh, they definitely talked about it at half 12 was definitely too many uh, like I saw I told the guy I did said I said we're lucky that we're winning right now uh, just because they weren't able to convert all those opportunities but they they had them uh, and so uh, the adjustment for guys to come back hit uh, be a part of uh, you know scrapping and, and getting rebounds is huge Jacques to quote Brian this is twofold um, <laughs> when you guys traded for Mikel you know you talked a lot about his time in Phoenix when Booker was out and how he had to carry the offensive load. You know, he's through 22 games, he's doing this on 50% shooting and, and whatnot. I mean, when did this kind of become an expectation for you of him being able to handle the, the go-to score load? And I guess talking about some of his splits, you know, what do you think is sustainable and realistic going forward? And what maybe, you know, is it inevitable that there might be a little bit of a drop off or, you know, rounding the mean or whatever the math term I'm trying to think of is? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, he becomes one or two on our, on you know, the opponent's scout report. So I think overall he gets more attention. And now what is he going to do with the attention? I think he's shown the ability to to score the basketball. And uh, you know, you, you talked about when we saw him doing that stretch in Phoenix. I think I'm learning about him, uh, and this has been a relationship where we've allowed him to just hoop. 
and uh, he's in positions that he wasn't in uh, a few months ago. And uh, I think he's really, I know, enjoyed having, um, I don't know, the, the burden, I guess we want to use that word, of uh, scoring for us or being an offensive you know, cog for us on a nightly basis. I think he's learning how to do it when uh, he's guarded by a primary defender. Uh, so this is all part of his growth. He puts in the work. Uh, he's present all the time, and uh, he pours his soul into the team, and uh, he deserves this. And we're going to keep putting more on his plate and see if he can handle it. Twofold. Twofold. <laughs> uh, guilty as charged. Uh, when you're talking about Day Day, what, A, what was it that you, I guess, saw from his minutes that they were giving him trouble with that you said, all right, Let's try, let's try DFS in that spot. Yeah, so the first piece is, I, I talked about it before the game. We didn't want to give up threes to Bogdanovich. We get a switch with Dayron. Now he's got to guard Bogdanovich at three, step back three on the right wing. So a guy like that, he had, he had come into the game shooting 70% for three in the three games already. So we didn't want to get him going. That was a huge piece of it. And that was a, a part of their barrage of Bogdanovich being in the game and them playing faster. And it's just a likely bigs are bigs and they gravitate towards the the rim and when Bogdanovich can shoot threes that could be deadly and uh, when you're looking at uh, I guess when you're trying to figure out the flow of the game I remember in Atlanta in your last one in your last meeting with them he hits the buzzer beater and Spencer I don't want to say Spencer was beating himself up but I mean he was talking about I was afraid mm -hmm to be aggressive with him because they're going to give him the call and whatnot, and he hits the game winner. Were there things that you learned from that game about just how aggressive you have to be with Trey? And if you're going to make a mistake, be over-aggressive, not be too lax with him. Yeah, I think that was a part of Spencer's start on him tonight. Uh, Spencer is, and I keep using it, has the IQ to adjust from game to game and what's needed and how the referee's going to call things, what Trey can get away with, what he can get away with. Uh, so that was a big part of the way we started. Uh, so Spencer was extremely solid. And, I don't know, it's some nuance to guarding him, uh, which way he likes to go, what moves he considers his go-to move, so I think we were more locked into what those look like, and then uh, making him finish at the rim over length. So the combination of all those things and Spencer taking a challenge was good for us.